just like to offer a big shout out to Touchdown Digital, the sponsor of this week's video. Hello, Glenn Samuel here. Look, today I just want to talk to you about um, what your photography means to you. And I often think about this and about other people, and <clears throat> I regularly speak about this uh, very subject at um, when I'm a guest speaker at um, various camera clubs throughout uh, New South Wales. And the question I do ask is, what does your photography mean to you? How much um, are you invested in it? That's the word. How much have you invested in it? And I'm not necessarily talking about financial investment, which obviously you have to to buy your equipment, but your time and your effort, um, uh, time away from family and loved ones, time away from work if you're that keen with your photography. But what does your photography mean to you? And it's a very, very good question. And it gets the creative juices flowing. Now, if you're a photographer that um, just likes to go out on weekends with your camera and take a few nice shots and then post them up to social media, if you're happy doing that, well, I'm happy for you. At least you're out there experiencing nature, you're taking a few nice photographs and you're showing them to the people or to the mass, mass market on social media. What about if you're a photographer that invests a lot of time, uh, finances, a lot of effort um, and you still um, go down the path of showing your images through social media such as Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, which is now X because of Elon Musk. Um, yeah, so what sort of photographer are you? That's the question. Now, as I said, if you like going out on weekends and having a shoot every now and again and taking a few nice images and just enjoying your surroundings, well, I'm very happy for you. I'm glad you're out there doing it. But if you're a photographer that, that goes that extra yard um, or you've reached a point where you don't think you're getting the mileage or the leverage with your work because you're only using social media, well then you need to probably listen up um, from what I'm about to say. Now, from time to time, we all get into a rut. We get into a deep hole, which we struggle to get out of. Now, that happens to the best of us. Um, happens to me, happens to everyone in all um, facets of life, really. But if you're in that situation, um, there's a few things you can do. Now, in a calendar year, there's four seasons, give or take a few weeks either side. Um, I suggest that you plan and you have some sort of structure. Because let's face it here, you're sacrificing quite a lot um, with your photography if, it, if you're at that level. The people that are down here are the people, as I said, just like to go out and take a few photographs and put them on social media. But if you're at this level where you've reached, you've gone from here to here, but you're still using social media to get your images out there, which is fine, um, maybe you should start to think about elevation. In other words, show more people more of your work. Be proud of your work. Be proud of what you do. Be proud of your skills um, and pass those skills on. I remember a few years ago, just a quick story, a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago now, um, when I transitioned from film to digital, um, I thought to myself, well, how on God's name am I going to show my images? There was no, internet was just starting to happen and, you know, not everyone had a computer in Australia. So I got to thinking that maybe I should approach the local council, um, local schools, libraries, uh, town halls, um, Lord Mayors, and me being me, I just went in front of these people and said, look, I'm a photographer. I've just finished three months photographing our suburb. Could I use your premises for a night as an exhibition? And you'd be surprised that I did not get one no. Because if you don't ask, you'll never know. So have you ever thought about holding an exhibition with your work? Print your images out. Now, people that know this channel and know me, I'm an advocate for printing your photographs. Now, I'm not saying you have to print them and frame them every time you print them. 
you can print them according to the seasons and then frame them according to the seasons in your home. But what about making photo books? When, how many times has people said to you when you go to work, oh, what'd you do on the weekend? Oh, I've done this, done this, and I went and took a few photos. Oh, okay, right, no problem. And they're looking at them on a four-inch screen. And yet you've invested all that time, money, and effort, blood, sweat, and tears, cost of fuel alone dictates that you must get everything right, um, only to have nothing really to show. But if you make a photo book, um, you can take it out to people and take it to work with you and say, yeah, well, this is what I did on the weekend. And you'll be, you'll blow them away. Seriously, if your work's good enough, people will start to take notice of you and be, you should be proud of what you're doing. This is for the people that are here, not here, but here. So there's other avenues for you to display your work. Um, as I said, exhibitions are really, really good. Um, I've done quite a few of them and still do them. Uh, in local halls and, and libraries and school halls and school rooms and classrooms where I print all the images and they're big images, they're quite large and they're on trestles and you know some are framed and it gets people talking, gets people thinking. Um, they've maybe never seen the area like you've seen it before because I think with our photography, especially landscape photography, we're usually there by ourselves and for as much as we can tell people what we experienced that morning or that night or that afternoon, it really doesn't resonate with them until they can actually see the image in front of them. So your photography must do your talking for you. Now, I know plenty of great photographers that really, I mean, you can't get two words out of them, but their, photo their photography and their actual images do the talking for them. There is no, you know, there's no doubt about that. So think about what you do with your work. Think about putting yourself out there. Um, most cities or towns, they have uh, yearly fairs or shows or, or festivals. Now, there's always an organiser. It's usually the local council. Contact them and say, listen, I'm a local photographer from the area. Um, I'd like to show my work of the area that we live in. And you, and you will find that people are interested in that, that, that conversation. They, they will want to know what you're on about. And it's not necessarily mean you're going out and sell the images. I mean, I've had plenty of exhibitions where people have said to me, can I buy these? And I've said no. Um, so it's not necessarily going out there to sell images just to make a dollar. You can if you want to. It's a bonus. But... You really need to start thinking if you're here with your photography up here, how can you go that next level? Now, I would not rely on social media for anything, quite frankly. Um, it's good to have, good to follow the news. But with your images, as I said, people are looking at them on a really small screen and they're not getting the benefit of your skill, your work. And this is why I'm always pushing for people to print their images, make photo books, um, print your own images and have them around the house, uh, put them in a portfolio. That's another thing. How many of you people watching this video uh, can show me a portfolio of your work? And I don't mean on a computer. I mean hard copies, hard copies, a hard copy portfolio that you can actually give me and I can go through them. I'd like to know how many people, and put your answer to this in the comment box below, I want to know how many of you people watching this video tonight have an actual hard copy portfolio. Not on here, or on the phone, or on the iPad, laptop, whatever. Um, I know portfolios are there. But how many portfolios have you got hard copy, hard backed? Because if you've got that, it means a lot more to the person looking at your, your work. Um, and as I said, this is for the people that are up here, not down here, up here, that want to go up further. So think about what you do with your work. Think about how much time and effort, how much investment you are making. Um, photography is not only about a uh, financial investment, it's about the investment from you, the human being, the person that is behind the camera. Um, this is a very, a very... Um, intriguing subject and I think a lot of us, I'm included, that we forget why we do photography. 
And as I said, if you're just happy to go out and take a few shots and be out in nature and submer you know, immerse yourself in that, well, I'm very happy for you. I really am. I'm glad you're out there taking photographs. But it says if you're at that level, you want to go further up, well, think about your next move. Um, think about planning. During COVID, um, where we couldn't go anywhere, we were locked down like, like you know, chooks in a pen um, due, to fi uh, due to governments, I used that time to plan the next two years. So depending on weather and health, um, I should be able to execute that two-year plan. I'm currently um, about a quarter of the way of a four-year plan, actually, on photographing um, the central west of New South Wales. And it's coming together uh, quite nicely. A lot of miles have been driven so far and I have many more to go. But that in itself gives, you, gives me the, um, the enthusiasm, the passion, um, to be passionate about your photography. How passionate are you? Please let me know in the, in the comments below. I wanna know what you think. Um, for me, I think passion is everything. I mean, you've only got to look at sporting events. Look at the, uh, and for the Australian people, look at the state of origin rugby league. Why do you think Queensland, nine times out of 10, beats New South Wales? Well, a lot of people think, well, they've got better players. Uh, no, they don't have better players. Both teams have really good players, and most of the players from each side will represent this country, play for Australia. It's called passion. A hungry fighter will always beat a non-hungry fighter. And I'm not saying New South Wales isn't passionate. Of course they are. They want to win. But when you've got passion and then you've got super passion, and that's where you are or you should be with your photography, you come out a winner. So this is, um, yeah, you have to really critique yourself and find out where you are at the moment with your photography. Where are you with your photography? Um, do you want to improve or are you happy just to stay at that level? Um, I've always said that photography is like an apprenticeship, you'll never finish it, which is really, really true. Um, we're always learning, we always make mistakes. I've been doing this for nearly half a century, half a century, uh, and I still make mistakes. You just don't see them, or you don't hear about them. Um, but you really got to think where you are and where you want to go, and how you get there is up to you. So there's plenty of ways you can improve your photography. And I don't mean by improving your images, I'm talking about improving your, your way of presenting yourself as a photographer and presenting your work to do the talking for you. Now this is the subject that I do talk about, as I said earlier, at um, photo um, camera clubs where I talk. Um, and it's quite strange, uh, three weeks ago I was at a local camera club, there was about 20, 23 people and one of the first questions I ask is, how many people here, raise your hands, print your images? Two people out of 23. So I said to the rest of the, I said to the 21, so what do you do with your images? And they said, oh, we sometimes we post them to social media or we just leave them on the computer. So then I say, well, how do people see them? Not one answer. Because they can't answer it. Because it's locked in a computer. Um, computers crash. Unfortunately, houses burn down. Uh, if you've got them on a hard drive, that can collapse. But it's very difficult to um, lose images that you've got printed and stored safely, and that's another thing. You can print your images like I have here and change them around in the, prop in the property here and have them in archival paper and boxes so to protect them. But try printing your images. That's a, a, another way of improving you as a photographer. It's the final piece of the puzzle. So, and there's other ways of getting out there. As I said, hold exhibitions. Um, try and get involved with local camera clubs. Tell them, can I come and speak to your members? And they love that. They love um, the interest that you would show. Um, you know, I, I, just get, I just get emails and phone calls saying, Glenn, can you come and give us a talk on this? Can you come and give us a talk on that? And, and, and that makes me feel very proud, you know. I, I feel proud that I can pass that information on because, as I said, I've been doing this for nearly half a century and it'll be remiss of me not to pass that knowledge on, whether it's through YouTube or YouTube videos or actually presenting, actually standing in front of people and presenting what I know. Um, so you can be in that position as well. I mean, it doesn't mean 
if you want to stay at this level or even at this level, fine. But think about you and your photography later on. Where do you want to take it? How far do you want to go? How far do you want to take your photography? Do you want to be known as a photographer in the area? Um, doesn't matter where you live. Um, go and pick a, an area and just concentrate on that area and photograph it for two or three weeks or two or three months or two or three years. Print them out. Have a record because eventually those places will change through development and weather and so forth. So if you want to improve, you really need to stop and think where you are now and where you want to go and where you want to elevate yourself. And I thought, well, I'll just put that information out here tonight. Just a few tips on how to do it. As I said, contact local member of parliament, uh, pro, um, headmasters of schools, uh, librarians, say, listen, this is what I do. Could I just... You know, even sling them a hundred dollars or something, just so you could hire the room, and um, and then put it out there. Use social media to advertise your work. All right. So, not saying social media is no good. Social media is good. Social media is great in the right hands. So, there's plenty of ways where you can lift, lift yourself from here right through up to the top, and you can do it not through skill because you've got the skill. I know you can take great photographs and make great images, but it's what you do with them and how you project yourself as a photographer that people will get to know. So eventually you have these things going on, people will get to know you. Um, and it's funny how it all evolves, right? It just all evolves it just, and you'll find it just happens. So be passionate, don't give up. You've invested a lot of time, money, effort, blood, sweat and tears, you've forsaken a lot of things um, with your photography, so why not make it more enjoyable for not only yourself, but for people that are going to see your fantastic images. So let me know what you think, it's a great subject, just thought I'd put it out there, put your comments and thoughts down below, I'd love to hear from you, especially about your portfolio, hard covered portfolio, something that I can pick up and smell and hold, that's what I'm talking about. So thank you for joining me here at Sniper Photography. My name's Glenn Samuel, and as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and friends, but most of all, you keep shooting, keep smiling. Bye for now.